one, two. Take your seats. Thank you, everyone. Oh, I'm always so grateful for Friday Chapel. I'm always so grateful that we've had this week together. Um, I'm also grateful that we get to say thank you to, to, to God and to the community together that, uh, that this week is, has been a good week. We get to say thanks for all the good things that have happened in our lives. It's what a wonderful opportunity we have as Panthers to pause in this moment and to catch our breath and to pray together. What a beautiful gift that is. Thank you for sharing that gift with, with me today. Our quote of the week, if the highest aim of a captain were to preserve his ship, then he would keep it in port forever. St. Thomas Aquinas reminds us. 
to set sail. I invite you into that moment of silence that we share together as we ring the bell and we invoke God's presence into our hearts, into this gathering, and into this time, this season, when all things are being made new in our lives. Today we keep a special focus on gratitude in our lives. We're here in this time for daily prayer and for announcements and to be the TMI Episcopal community. So let's let the spirit of gratitude and love gather us as we begin our chapel today. Today, in this time of gratitude and love, we hear from one of our cherished seniors. I will give you as a light to the nations, that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. Lord, open our lips. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let's say together the first song of Isaiah. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my savior. Therefore you shall draw water with rejoicing from the springs of salvation. And on that day you shall say, Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the peoples. See that they remember that his name is exalted. Sing the praises of the Lord, for he has done great things, and this is known in all the world. Cry aloud, inhabitants of Zion. Ring out your joy, for the great one in the midst of you is the Holy One, Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. In this time set apart, we focus on our values of wisdom, integrity, service, excellence, and reverence. This time gives us a chance to consider our plans for the day and to be grateful. In this time, we can pause. We can ask God to give us right thought and action. We can ask if the choices that we make today will help our community and help us lean into the notion that we share of choosing joy over negativity. We can pause, take a breath. We can think about, pray for, and build up our neighbors and our friends. And if we're slightly more daring, we can do the same for our enemies as well. Most importantly, we can seek forgiveness and grace. We pray for these things, we hope for these things, and we live out these things together. Together, we remember our Episcopal identity, which calls us into this space, into this place, into this time, and we remember that all are welcome to be seen, to be known, to contemplate, to connect, and to be community. I invite you into prayer as we pray our senior prayer. Gracious God, as a humble group of TMI grads, we come to you seeking your blessing. The class of 2022 is on a quest to lead well, honor each other, seek unity, and encourage one another. Lift us, we pray, to the height of excellence. Help us to walk this journey together, climbing off the cliff of challenge and achievement in order to have the best view of the world around us. 
Open your eyes to every leaf on the most blessed tree of life, knowing that you created everything around us. Give us thankful hearts that are full of courage and hope. Guide us into discipline, dedication, and independence so that we may be responsible, so that the values that we hold dear for ourselves, our classmates, and the whole team, my family. Teach us to be kind, knowing that when we face failure, we are never alone. We offer this prayer to you, O Lord, hoping to be connected to wisdom, integrity, service, excellence, and reverence. One day at a time, as Panthers united around the common goal of walking the way of love together. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Philippians. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in, every, in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made, to, made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding with God, will guard your hearts and your mind in Christ Jesus, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So I'm going to invite Spencer to come on up. We'll say a little prayer. Let us pray. May the words of Spencer's mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable and pleasing to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm welcome for Spencer's Chapel Talk. What do you struggle with mostly in your daily life? Is it homework? Is it getting out of bed to come to school? Or could it be something as simple as having a conversation with a person? Throughout my entire life, I have struggled to understand what love is. My mother and father got divorced when I was only seven years old, and my father got remarried, and that ended in a divorce as well. I've never had a great example of what true love really is. I think that we all have an idea of what a family is supposed to look like and what a relationship between two people and love is supposed to look like. Every song ever written is about love, whether it is falling in love and losing your mind or breaking up and losing your mind. I love music, but when I listen to it, I feel this ache in my chest because I realize that I have really struggled to find love myself because of the situations I have been in and the things I have witnessed in my life. My parents and I have always had a great relationship through the divorce. They both tried their very best to make me feel secured and loved. The problem is, is that when your whole world changes overnight and you find yourself living in two different homes and trying to find a new normal in spite of everything being different. I have always struggled with going back and forth between homes and only getting to see one parent at a time. The schedule was uh, what always stressed me out the most. Sometimes I wanted my mom when I was with my dad or I needed my dad when I was with my mom. And then there were times when I felt like they were ready for me to leave one house when I wanted to stay. They would always tell me we have to follow the decree. Following a schedule does not make a person feel loved or wanted. The truth is, no matter how hard my parents tried, the security was gone, along with the belief happily ever after. When I was first introduced to my stepmother, she was amazing. I felt really loved and special in the beginning. She treated me and my brother as if we were her own. For about three years, I felt unconditional love from her. But then she had a child of her own, and honestly, everything changed. I felt a little bit abandoned and unloved because she seemed to stop caring. I never truly understood why. But looking at it now, I understand that when you have a child of your own from your, from your own blood, you will put them over everything. I mean, I would, and I have forgiven her about that. All these experiences with my family have contributed, contributed to my feelings at times that I am unlovable. I have always been terrified that my life will turn out the same way it has been so far, that I will get married, then divorced that I will put my children through the back and forth nonsense and all the unhappiness and broken dreams. I have always been terrified of love because I've never truly understood it. On a positive note though, all these experiences have made me stronger and wiser. Even though I really struggle with my parents' divorce, it has also led to good things. First of all, you get two Christmases, and who doesn't love when Santa visits both homes? I have also learned to adapt to changes and set boundaries when necessary. My relationship with my mother and father changed after the divorce. 
When your parents divorce, you get to know them separate from one another. And in all honesty, I feel that I am closer with both of them. My father has taught me very valuable lessons about having a relationship with God and knowing that he will never fail me. He has been there for me and my friends, and I am truly grateful. My mother has always been by my side to encourage me and lift my spirits. She is always taking care of me when I am sick and constantly, constantly making food for me and my brother. And to my brother, Brad Gilroy, that little man has been there with me through everything. I have helped him, and he has helped me. Rock, I love you so much, and thank you for everything. I know that my past doesn't determine my future if I don't want it to, and I can make changes to attract something different. I get to create my own path and live my life according to my values. Unfortunately, there is no hand guide on how to live life. However, there is that inner voice that nudges you to do the best you can do and follow your heart in all that you do. TMI has helped me tremendously throughout the years. Everyone in this com community has supported me and loved me through trying times. My team and my family has been there through thick and thin, and for that, I thank all of you, but especially my group of friends that I've been surrounded by for six years. They have been here for me no matter what. They have shown me so much love over the years, and they have made me feel loved in my darkest times. I have learned that if I want love, I have to give love, and I f if I want to create a different path than what I have been shown, then I need to create my own. This is not always easy. It means getting off a path that is familiar and wandering off and finding another one. They say that it's breaking a cycle, and that requires work and perseverance. I like to picture myself 20 years from now happily married with two kids and a white picket fence. Who I am today doesn't define who I will be tomorrow. We all have the ability to change if we want to badly enough. Every day the clock resets. Your wins don't matter. Your failures don't matter. I would like to leave you with a quote by Rocky Balboa. The world ain't all sunshine and rainbows. It's a very mean and nasty place. And I don't care how tough you are, it will beat you to your knees and keep you there permanently if you let it. You, me, or nobody is going to hit as hard as life. But it ain't about how hard you hit, it's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward. That's how winning is done. Now, if you know what you're worth, then go out and get what you're worth. But you got to be willing to take the hits and not point fingers saying you ain't where you want to be because of him, her, or nobody. Cowards do that and that ain't you. You're better than that. Do y'all have the ability to go out and set goals and strive to live the life that you want? I believe we all do. Thank you. Please stand. <laughs> the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to God our Father for all his gifts so freely bestowed upon us. For the beauty and wonder of your creation in earth and sky and sea. We thank you, Lord. For all that is gracious in the lives of men and women, revealing in the image of Christ. We thank you, Lord. For our daily food and drink, our homes and families, and our friends. We thank you, Lord. For minds to think, and hearts to love, and hands to serve. We thank you, Lord. For health and strength to work, and leisure to rest and play. We thank you, Lord. For the brave and courageous, who are patient in suffering, and faithful in adversity. We thank you, Lord. For all valiant seekers after truth, liberty, and justice. We thank you, Lord. For the communion of saints in all times and places. We thank you, Lord. Above all, we give you thanks for the great mercies and promises given to us in Christ Jesus our Lord. To him be praise and glory with you, O Father, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. We invite your prayers of thanksgiving, those things that you're grateful for. I would ask that everyone take a second and think about three things that make you smile with gratitude. Maybe they're people, maybe they're places, maybe they're things. What brings you joy?
also invite you to think of three things that concern you. Things done and left undone. Things that are bigger than all of us. Things we worry about or lose sleep over. What keeps us from joy? Collecting all our prayers and praises together as one, we're bold to pray in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Friends, our life on earth is short. There isn't much time to gladden the hearts of those who travel with us. So be quick to love. Make haste to be kind. And be assured that God is infinitely more concerned with our future than with our past. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you this day and always. Amen. Please have a seat. So I'm going to invite Spencer and his family to be dismissed for our announcements. We've got a few special announcements today that are going to go a little longer than usual with announcements. So thank you guys. Let's give it up for Spencer again and his family. Well done. You can come right this way, you guys. Yeah, we'll, get the, uh, we'll let them get the picture taking started. And, uh, and uh, I'm going to invite Dr. Harris up our head of school for academic and program. Big hand for Dr. Harris, please. <laughs> Thank you. Beautiful people, good morning and happy new year. Good morning. That was a little dog. Good morning and happy new year. Good morning and happy new year. Thank you. It's my first time to address you in 2022, so I can still say happy new year. I wanted to take a minute to let you know that we have some visitors coming to our campus um, in a couple of weeks. So every time I'm up here, I try to use this as an opportunity to let you know what my responsibilities are and the responsibility that I have to you and to the faculty. I am responsible for all academics and programs. I'm responsible for working with your teachers to make sure that they provide the best level of instruction that they can. Well, that also involves looking in the mirror and making sure that we're doing right by you. So we have some guests coming to our campus January 23rd, which is a Sunday, through January 26th. So they'll be here Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. We are undergoing what is called an accreditation. And accreditation is basically a process where our peers look at us to see, are we doing everything that we say we're doing? Are we who we say we are? Are our teachers doing all that they say they're going to do to make sure that you receive the best level of instruction? Is our campus safe? Are our facilities adequate for you? Um, is dining adequate for you? What about technology? What about the administration? Are we handling our money properly? Tuition is paid to us by your parents and they want to make sure that we're doing what we say we're going to do. So teachers and administrators from other independent schools will come and sort of review us. So just like your teachers give you an assessment, you're given a test, this is sort of a test for us. It happens once every 10 years. We will have people here that represent the Independent Schools Association of the Southwest. You all have heard of ISAS. It's comprised of almost 100 schools in, I think, nine states now. And, and then the Southern Association of Episcopal Schools. So those two groups will have teams come out, again, who work at other schools to look at us, to say to us, these are some things you're doing really, really well, and here are some opportunities for you to do some things even better. So the reason I'm standing here is to let 
you know that just like we expect the best from you, we expect the best from ourselves. So we'll have a group of our peers come and take a look to see if we are who we say we are and are we doing right by you. Again, that's January 23rd through the 26th. There's nothing right now that you need to do differently. I just want you to know that we ask ourselves the same things that we ask you, which is can we be better? So know that that's coming up uh, in a week or so. So if you see people on campus, just smile. Be your normal, friendly, beautiful selves and welcome them to TMI. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Harris. I'm excited to show y'all off to the accreditation team. I'm excited to show them the best school in the universe. Uh, so I'm grateful uh, for, for that announcement. Thank you, Dr. Harris. Well, it is Friday, therefore it is Dr. Fletcher Friday, um, and he's got some announcements for us. Dr. Fletcher, the podium is yours. Good morning. Just two uh, brief announcements, uh, no jokes until uh, next week, I need a little bit of time to come up with some original material, so we'll say that until, <laughs> until next time, friends. Um, I'm excited to, to introduce Dr. Marissa LeBron Stryker. She's new to the CMI community as a colleague this semester as the student services assistant. Her career has been about helping people, and I believe she's looking forward to meeting and connecting with you. During her career, she has coordinated and supervised group counseling services for students and parents and collaborated on wellness activities. Additionally, she has served as an adjunct professor at the University of Texas at San Antonio, where she has taught master level, uh, counseling, master level counseling courses. Um, Dr. LeBron Stryker, or Dr. Stryker, earned both of her Master's of Arts degree in counseling and her PhD in counselor education and supervision from UTSA. As the student services assistant, she will develop and monitor academic plans and communicate with you students and your families about your education and your wellness um, progress. She'll also work with closely with me, uh, Mr. Counts, Ms. Condry, Ms. Adams, and other me members of the wellness team. So feel free to reach out to her. We are super excited to have her join our community. Please welcome Dr. Schreiker. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, I'm Dr. Stryker. I am in Coates 209. I am very excited to be here as part of the TMI community and as part of the wellness team. I look forward to meeting all of you and supporting all of your academic and other wellness needs. Estoy aquí para apoyar sus necesidades académicas y para su bienestar. So, por favor, ven a verme, Coates 209. Gracias. Thank you very much. Hey, Dr. Stalker, Dr. Stalker, Dr. Stalker, don't go anywhere yet. Come on up. I want to give you a little bless, a welcome blessing. Let us pray. Gracious God, thank you for so many gifts that you have given Dr. Stryker that she shares with us in this wonderful place. Bless her as she begins this new chapter of her career, and bless us as we receive her into this community. We are so grateful for her presence among us. May we be a blessing to each other now and always. Amen. Thank you. Woo! Okay, on the screen behind me is an image of um, Dr. the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Um, that's actually from the cover of the April 18th, 1968 edition of the magazine, where he graces the cover. I showed that picture because that picture is um, a copy of the Jet magazine that I have. I have that copy of the magazine. My grandmother gave it to me. Um, and she did indeed purchase that, that Jet magazine for 25 cents on the week of the, fifth, the 15th of 1968. Um, that, that, that magazine was issued uh, the week after his assassination of April 4th, 1968. So that was a big deal. What, what I liked about that magazine that is that it focused on his life and not his death. It focused on all of the great things that he had done and not that, that tragic incident incident that ended his all too short life. I think he was 39 when he passed away, and I'm older um, than Dr. King was when he passed away, and it made me think of all of the great things he did 
in his short life. So sometimes I, around this time, I go up to my, um, my storage when I take out the shoebox where that magazine sits in a Ziploc bag and I painstakingly thumb through the magazine to get an idea of how his life was back then about a half a century ago. And it makes me think of the sacrifices that he and others have made. And for me, that universe of others includes a bunch of women, my mother, my grandmother, my great-grandmother, that they have made to get me to, to this point, to make my, my life significantly better, um, to know that they've sacrificed, including Dr. King has sacrificed to do things that are as simple as me, Father Ben, and Father Scott walking through the same door together, um, for example. So I don't want to make this too heavy or too hard, but while you are enjoying your three-day weekend, please take a moment to think about Dr. King, his legacy, and the sacrifices he and others have made to get us to this moment this moment, we are truly standing on the shoulders of giants. And with that said, work hard, play hard. Have a great weekend. Dr. Dr. Fletcher, thank you. Next week, we will honor Dr. King. Um, instead of having a quote of the week, um, I went to find a quote of the week from Dr. King, and to find one quote from Dr. King is nearly impossible. So we'll have quotes of the week that will come from Dr. King, and we'll honor Dr. King with the Eucharist uh, to the glory of God and in thanksgiving for the, mis uh, for the ministry of all those who have led the way for where we are today. So uh, we'll, we'll do that as a community on Wednesday. Um, I'm going to invite members of the core up. We have a fantastic announcement for you from them. So I'll invite them to come up. Hey guys. So as you know, mil military ball is coming up and you don't want to miss it. The other week we had the opportunity to go to the Hyatt and actually do a menu tasting. So there's going to be this beautiful salad, a great steak dinner, and then the dessert is amazing. It's fantastic. And I just want to take a little bit to talk about the, uh, the after party. So it's not going to be like homecoming with, you know, we're outside, everyone's far away. We're going to have the lights off. We're going to have a smoke machine. We're going to have strobe lights. We're going to have lasers. You know, we're going to have club bangers, okay? This is going to be good. It's going to be fantastic. It's going to be a rager. No, no. Um, <laughs> But there's going to be a quesadilla bar afterwards, um, during it, uh, just in case you get a little hungry. Um, get your tickets by the uh, 4th. Um, tickets will sell out, so please get your tickets soon. Thank you. Go Panthers. Fantastic. Come on up, ladies. Come on up. So tonight, girls basketball has a home game against Regents, and it's senior night. She's not in here, but we're going to be celebrating Claire. She's put in four years to this program, and she's really dedicated, so it would be nice if you all were to come out and support. Thank y'all. Make sure to wish her luck. Go Panthers. Go Panthers. <laughs> Thank you, ladies. We will be cheering you on tonight and, and thankful for Claire's contribution to that amazing team. Thanks, ladies. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Seniors, you may go.